how does how do we proceed now? So the idea is that we need to go to more generalized rates. Okay? Which have the same physical dimensions of a time derivative, but are really more than the time derivative. And in particular, we want to look, we want to have some way to get rid of the effect of this rotation, okay, the, the effect of the rotation rate. Okay, so uh, nullify the effect of Q dot, all right? Now, um, let me just state here that many such rates can be defined. Okay? Um, and the general form of these rates is, is of these relations then is the following. We have tau. We can compute some general rate of it, and because we have some general rate, I'm going to use that symbol to denote some rate, okay? That's not a dot, it's some rate, right? It's not just a traditional material time derivative, it's just some sort of rate which has the right physical dimensions of a, of, of, of a rate of tau, okay? Of tau. So, you can find many such objects which will then allow you to write a relation of the form that. Many rates can be defined to be used in relations of this type, okay? But when we do that, what is left up to us to model is what that transformation tensor is, right? So this, this then becomes an equivalent, uh, it becomes like an equivalent Uh, elasticity tensor in omega t, okay? And a great deal of uh, constitutive modeling for finite deformations when one wanted to write things out in the current configuration used to come down to, to figuring out what or, or really to, to modeling what A had to be. Okay, um, that is uh, that was an industry, but it has fortunately been largely bypassed. It's also, it, I, I say fortunately because because one can very easily get into situations where we get um, the same sort of problem that are, that I described with hypoelasticity, which is that if A is not properly obtained from the uh, by by by, from this notion of hyperelasticity, one can have uh, closed cycles in which one generates work. Okay, I won't get into that because that's an entirely different. That that's a, almost an unending topic and um, largely leads to wrong results. Okay, but there is a correct and exact way of doing things. And here's what we do. Okay, the idea that we need to follow is to define a rate by pulling back tau to omega naught, okay, which will basically give us S, okay. We pull it back, apply time derivative, and push forward. Okay? I've written there in words what I'm about to write an equation for. So we start out with tau, current configuration. Pull it back. Now, because of the relation between tau and s, what we have here is S, okay? Now, this is a material object. It sees nothing about 
rigid body motions on the current configuration, okay? Take its time derivative. There is a single time derivative defined here, right? Push it forward. Okay? Why does this work? Let me draw why this works. Omega naught. Okay, we have that and we are talking of applying rigid motions on that. Okay? Phi, phi plus, right, which is C plus Qx. Right? Tau. Pull it back. Okay? Pull it back. Okay? To, to S. They're equivalent, right? Under the same state of stress, we have different stress tensors we can talk about. All right? Calculate derivatives here. Okay? These derivatives don't see anything about this motion. Right? Anything that we do on S here. Right? The step that is enclosed in the bigger parentheses here. Right above, just, just above this equation, right? The step that is enclosed in here sees nothing about these rotations, about rotations on the current configuration. This step is not seen back here on the reference configuration. Okay? Push it forward. Okay? We, we finally have something after pushing it forward. We have something in the, in the, in the final current configuration which sees nothing, right? Which, which, which completely misses the effect of the rotation. Okay? Let's see, uh, let's see how this actually works out, okay? All right, okay? The reason this works is, um, so let's, let's now consider the following, right? We have um, tau plus, pull it back, F plus inverse, F plus inverse transpose, okay? We pulled it back, all right? And then we're going to take time derivatives here, okay? Let's just compute what happens with this step. This is partial with respect to time off. What is F plus inverse? F plus, F plus is QF, right? So F plus inverse is F inverse Q inverse, which is Q transpose. Tau plus is Q tau Q transpose. F plus inverse transpose is um, inverse transpose of QF, which after taking the inverse and the transpose gives us back Q inverse transpose, but Q inverse is Q transpose. Therefore, Q inverse transpose is Q transpose transpose, which is Q, right? And we have here uh, F inverse transpose. Okay, we're talking of taking time rates of this, but these, these two terms are gone, right? Isotropic tensor. Okay, so this is essential, this is indeed the, exactly the same thing as um, right, which is basically the time derivative of S. Okay? Okay, so here's what happens. Reference configuration, current configuration, we're going to do rigid motions. What we're saying is you could be after, even after your rigid motions, right? Just take what you have for top plus, the transformed uh, components, pull it all the way back to the reference configuration, right? You're back in here. You do have a stress too. We still do have, have that stress, the second Piola Kirchhoff stress, which we, are, uh, which we are working with. Compute how that is changing. Okay? That's what we've done so far. Right? Now push it forward. In pushing it forward, we're pushing it forward with the, with, with the new F. Okay? Right? Now, F plus of uh, the derivative of 
f plus inverse tau plus f plus inverse transpose. Okay, we take all of this and push it forward with f plus transpose. Okay, and pushing it forward with f plus transpose, what we've done is that we pulled everything back to omega naught, took our simple material time derivative. There is no other time derivative in this configuration. Push it all the way into the post rigid body motion configuration. Okay? In the process, we've completely nullified the effect of those rotations. Okay? This object is called, uh, we're defining this with a symbol that we're going to write as LV of tau, of tau, okay? In this particular case, it is LV of tau plus, okay? Because we're operating on tau plus with it, okay? This is called the Lie derivative. Sorry, okay? And uh, we're gonna stop here for this segment, but when we come back, we're gonna say a few more things and then related to a tangent.